Welcome back. Our guest is Tim Wilkins talking uh, a little bit of everything tonight. And uh, another hot story in the news locally is the election, which continues to be uh, disputed between Christine Jennings and Vern Buchanan. And uh, the news today of Christine Jennings filing a lawsuit to uh, perhaps uh, force a revote because uh, the undervoting was what, over about 18,000 votes that were not counted or nobody voted in that particular race. And it's so close uh, that uh, that's the dispute right now. Any thoughts on, uh, on that? Well, the mistake you start off with right away is the touch screen. I walk into the church where I vote, and there's a woman somewhere between um, uh, rigidity and uh, some other rigor <laughs> that comes up and says, do you know how to operate the touch screen? And I said, do you need help? She said, no, I'm here to help you. <laughs> I said, honey, no, 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 no. I can get my email on this thing. There's lots I can do. You're going to show me. And then as I'm going through it, she's showing me the process, and it's laughable. There is no way that this thing messed up. If they didn't want to vote, it gives you the opportunity three times to double-check your vote. Now, if you inappropriately touch the touch screen, that's different. If there was a little something <laughs> weird going on there. But you double-check and triple-check the vote. You know maybe 18,000 people didn't like that candidate. Either choice. It's the, we come down to the lesser of two evils on so many candidacies. You lost, honey. Save the lawsuit money. Yeah, you have that chance at the end before everything's done to push that final button. They, they give you the full review. These are your votes. Right. Would you like to vote now? Press yes. Yeah. 18,000 people pressed yes, that they didn't vote for either candidate. Yeah, and, it, and that's a vote in itself. That a non-vote is a vote. There's a song in there somewhere, and yeah. I can't, you know. It's a song in my heart, isn't that the song? No. <laughs> The, the difference in our ages is so so vivid sometimes. Are we the same age? No, no. We're not? No, we're close, but no, <laughs> not so much. I just have an older soul, I guess. I play all that big band music on the radio. I love right big there. band music. Yeah. you got to come down sometime and do it with us. I'm down all the time. Yeah, Saturday nights at 10, Sundays at 8. Because i got nothing <laughs> shaking, Doug. i really got a whole lot of nothing going on. Yeah. The, the Iglesias thing is going to be fun. We're going to kick that back off in uh What's it like uh, working with him? I mean, you're talking about uh, the Frank Sinatra of Europe, basically, right? He has been so good to me, but he's hysterical. Like, when I got this thing, we were out in, uh, in California at the wine country. We're good and crocked at 3.30 in the afternoon. We're at the sand sound check. We're in this outdoor amphitheater. And uh, we both have a pinot, and he looks over and he goes, So, team, tell me, when are you going to be famous? <laughs> Everyone who has worked with Julio Iglesias is famous, and you're not famous. Why? Well, three days later, I get this call from the CBS affiliate up in Tampa, and I get the show, and I run to his office, and I pound on the door, and I say, Julio, I got my own show. This is great. How does this mean to Julio Iglesias? <laughs> are you leaving, or am I going to get to be on your little show? <laughs> Already demeaning it. Already demeaning, <laughs> yes. Three days before that, I was going to be famous. And now that I'm going to be famous, it's your little show. When am I going to be oh, on? Boy. How does this benefit Julio Iglesias? <laughs> does, does he have a time limit for you? Like, do you only have a certain time? And Like Sinatra had a deal where the comedian could have five minutes one night, he could have 20 the next night. As soon as Frank said, you're off, you're off. Does, does Julio do that to you? That's what it is. Yeah. And the funny thing is... Uh, is the better I'm doing, the sooner he pulls me off. Is that right? <laughs> and the worse I'm doing, he'll say, I've looked over at the side and I'm waiting and I'll see the sound guy on one side saying stretch. That's where I look for my signs. And on the other side, I see Julio with his arms folded. And I said, if he's standing right there, why am I doing seven more minutes? And I walked off. And the first time he ever did it to me was in um, New Brunswick, New Jersey. And it was a horrid death. It was the night that I picked on Governor McGreevy's wife right, in the front row. Right. And I walked off and I said, why did you keep me up there if you're standing right there? And he says, you know, sometimes I like to watch you suffer. <laughs> <laughs> if Julio is going to suffer, you are going to suffer. <laughs> That's great. Well, he's uh, got a new album out, I think, isn't he? Romantic Classics. Yeah. It's uh, uh, elevated music. Not him, but I mean... Uh, elevated music of the 70s, 80s, and 90s sung with a Latin accent. Right. Yes. Uh, to All the Girls I've Loved Before was, was the original English song, and now he's doing... Um, like a uh, foreigner. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you're going to be opening for him when he comes to town in February, right? Provided he doesn't get blab, yeah. That's right. Mm. <laughs> We're going to have him blab before he comes to Channel 10. We already <laughs> have a book. I'm sure you do, Doug. I'm sure. <laughs> and 1220. Is that Red Jacket? Get that shot. Yeah. Red Jacket, Green Scarf. That's right. <laughs> well, Mr. Iglesias, I broke out the good jacket. I got the good jacket waiting Yes, and I even covered up the Remax sticker. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be great. And, and now, uh, in addition to the Channel 10 show, you do gigs around town. McCurdy, you got another gig coming up locally? Folks no, see you? no, no, no. Okay. Too much, really. Yeah. No. 
Uh, doing a lot of Christmas stuff, as always. Christmas is a big season for me to uh, to do Christmas parties and corporate functions. Uh, one of the only comics. Uh, the, there's two or three really prime comics in this town that can actually work corporate clean and incorporate other uh, material in, and I'm proud to be one of the only ones. Yeah, I want to get you back next time to talk about that, because we haven't really had a chance to get into that. But you, you pride yourself, and I think that's a great thing, uh, that your comedy is basically family-oriented, which you don't see that often, even in clubs. Even in clubs, You have yeah. a, an act where you can do a, bring a family to. I, I did a church show last Provided year. I've got the Manson family. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've got a Manson family show. I've got a, a good solid 20 that I can do for... Uh, no, but you can do that, too. But, I mean, I think that's great. You don't see that in the nightclubs as much. No, they have, like, the Michael Richards thing. They've gone to the lowest common denominator, yeah. and yeah. the shock factor is there. It's, it's sad. It really is. Tim Wilkins, I appreciate you coming down tonight. You're a good friend of mine. Thanks for on the radio real soon, and we'll have you back on the show. Absolutely. Thanks to uh, Rochelle for letting me sit in tonight. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.